Kara Lauder works in a mine up in West Australia's Pilbara region. Now, if you don't know where that is, I would Google it because it's absolutely beautiful. She's also in the very early stages of launching what she hopes to be Australia's best Western boots company. Think cowboy boots. And boy, oh boy, is she putting in place some solid marketing strategies. <laughs> yeah. Before we discover those solid marketing strategies, this episode of the Small Business Big Marketing Show is made entirely possible thanks to Fastmail and 52ways.biz. Now, Fastmail is this cool email provider that's not only super quick, it's also ad-free, totally private, and more secure than, I don't know, something that's really, really, really secure. Packages start from the cost of a cheeky little latte per month. You can grab a free 30-day trial plus get 15% off your first year over at fastmail.com forward slash Timbo. And then there's 52ways.biz, a free one-day business event for people like you and I, business owners that want to grow. Hosted by Dale Beaumont, it's eight hours of solid business building gold and you can grab your free tickets over at 52ways.biz before it's too late. I said, welcome to a small business marketing show Where successful small business owners share their souls To take your marketing straight to the lead Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie And welcome back to the Small Business Big Marketing Show I am your host, Tim Bowie Reed You, infinitely more importantly, you're a motivated business owner You're ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. It's what we do around here. It's what we've always done. And it's kind of the reason I show up each week because I just want to help you grow. Big show today, Cara Lauder from the Cater Boot Company joins us to share some marketing ideas that she's using in the early stages of her cowboy boot business. Do you like my yee-haw up the front there? Hey? Silly Timbo. Resident expert Dale Beaumont from 52 Ways has an idea to help you manage your teams. I share another low-cost marketing idea that addresses something way too many business websites do or don't do that really pisses me off. And we go back into the vault revisiting a chat I had with Declan Lee of Gelato Messina, a business that loves to break or at least challenge all the rules. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. (sighs) Life just got a whole lot easier. Hi, it's Dale Beaumont again from 52ways.biz, the best one-day business workshop ever with another productivity tool to make your business life a whole lot easier. So what is the tool? It's called Teamwork and it's available at teamwork.com. Now, before I tell you about it, let me explain what it's all about. You see, every business needs, in my opinion, three things. Every business needs a good CRM. Every business needs a central place to store all of your systems your intellectual property, and every business needs some good task management software. Now, when it comes to number three, there are lots of different tools out there, things like Trello, things like Asana, and also Zoho Projects. But the one that I like the most is called Teamwork, and it's a fantastic project management tool, and it can manage not just your to-dos, but also all the to-dos of everyone in your company. And what I love about it as well is you can do projects within it, and you can save this once and then you can roll it out any time you then do those series of tasks again. It's a fantastic tool and it's available at teamwork.com. There you go. I told you life would get a whole lot easier. This has been Dale Beaumont from 52ways.biz. Now back to you, Timbo. Life just got a whole lot easier. Hey, thanks, Dale. Now, if you're loving the productivity tools Dale is sharing, then you're going to love his 52 Ways event that's touring Australia and New Zealand at the moment. It's eight hours of solid business building gold, and you can grab a free ticket for you and a mate or two over at 52 Ways. That's 52ways.biz. And if you're going to the Melbourne one, 
make sure you come up and say hello because I will be there as well. Coming up after today's interview, I'll share another low-cost marketing idea in that segment. We've all grown to love called What Have You Got to Lose? But right now, let's meet today's successful business owner, Cara Lauder from the Cater Boot Company, a unique Australian designed and owned Western boot company. And I've got to tell you, these boots are not only very cool, they are very, very high quality. And so is Cara's marketing. Now, I was introduced to Cara by listener and photographer Paul Pitchigan, who sent me this email. He said, Hey, Tim, just wanted to make an intro to Cara Lauder, owner of Cater Boot Company. Cara is doing some awesome things with marketing, using influencers combined with unique ideas to gain quite a following and demand for her boots in the very early stages of a business. We recently filmed a video in the Pilbara region of Western Australia for her, and it came together quite nicely. Cheers, Paul. <laughs> quite nicely. A bit of an understatement. We talk about that video in the interview, and I'll put a link in the show notes to it. Now, what I love about what Cara is doing is that whilst she's new to the world of small business and she's pregnant with her second bubba, she's doing everything she can to ensure her business's success, from the quality of her product to implementing a far-reaching marketing campaign that includes clever use of social influences, video marketing, social media. She's attending markets and plenty more. She's also willing to take risks where I would argue others wouldn't be. And she's also very clear on what her brand stands for, which impacts what she will and won't get involved with. So I started off by asking Cara to paint a picture of the beautiful Pilbara region where she lives because it's absolutely amazing. We are about 16 hours drive north of Perth or a two-hour plane flight in the pretty much the middle of nowhere it's um the outback um it's called the pilbara region of western australia it's very beautiful but it's also a very harsh environment out here wow sounds beautiful i imagine pretty hot you you probably like uh, i'm just thinking of all the people i've interviewed over the years you probably live in the remote most remote area it is very remote and very hot it's uh we don't even really get a winter here um our winter is still uh quite a nice temperature um (laughs) unreal well clearly clearly it gets the creative juices flowing so you only launched cater boot co in August 2016. Where'd the idea come from? Uh, maybe about five or six years ago, uh, I I just realised there weren't many different boot designs out there and definitely nothing that was inspired by Australia. So I thought I would do it myself and see how I went. So that's what I've, what I've done. W- were you looking for an idea? Um well, I guess I was always kind of thinking ahead. Um, I wasn't going to work in mining forever and um, what could I do when I left it? And I've, I've always drawn and designed things, so I was kind of working out what I could do. And I love Western boots and I've always worn them, so I, I thought maybe I could try and give that a shot. <laughs> I love it. So you were sort of on – but you're, you're a fly-in, fly-out mining worker, right? Yes, uh, I, I did that for almost eight years, yeah, to the Pilbara. So, so you are kind of going, okay, well, this is not going to be forever. You've got a young daughter, hubby. You're kind of planning for the future. Out of interest, before we talk about how you're laying an amazing foundation for Cater Boots, what, what other ideas came to mind? Uh, well, I had clothing first, and so I'd, I worked on that before I even um, sorted the boots out. But then I thought there's so much clothing brands out there, but the yeah. most unique one would be to start with boots and then I can always bring clothes in later to add to the brand. So I push that aside and I can I can come back to that after and um, I just started with the boots. Interesting. Five years later, you launch in August 2016. What, what made you think that, um, I mean, most industries are crowded and RM Williams have kind of got the Australian outback boot market cornered. They do, but they're not 100% Australian owned anymore. Boom. Whereas I am. <laughs> so there's the difference there. Right. <laughs> there you go. Point of difference. Tick. Gotta love that. <laughs> so you're pretty passionate about them. Describe a cater boot to us and just why are they so bloody good? Well, they're handmade in Mexico, and Mexico makes some of the best boots in the world. And 
all of our boots, um, they have over 160 processes just to get the one boot made, and so much of that is is handmade. So they're they're just of exceptional quality, and we use the most expensive leathers available for the whole process, so that they can be the most comfortable boot possible. Okay, so that sounds pretty functional to me, Cara. <laughs> Yes. Sell so, me the sell so me the emotion of a cater boot. I design them with with Australia in mind. So I've got I've got a lot of Australian designs, and there's a lot more that are yet to be released that yep. I think people are going to love. And so you're wearing Australia proudly on your shoe, pretty. Much. What, what do you mean? Give give us an example. <laughs> well, there is there's one coming out soon that I can give you a sneak peek of yeah. that. Um, it, it actually has uh, red tailed black cockatoo feathers printed all over the boots. Um, so that that is very unique. It's very Australian, and it's um, something very different that I haven't seen on any other boots. Mm-hmm. So it's and it's beautiful. It ends up it looks like an incredible boot, and yeah, I just think it's it's pretty awesome. So, so the, just to be clear, because again, this is an audio medium. You, we're talking cowboy boots, aren't they? Is that kind of yeah, the, is western that the, boots? Western boots. Yep, that's it. They, they're cowboy boots, but they they're also we have people wear them that aren't even Western wearers. I they bet just you do. like them as a fashion as a fashion statement. Well, that kind of goes for you know R M Williams are worn by much more than you know uh, cattle. What are they called? Cowboys. <laughs> I don't even yeah, know what the right yeah, terminology right. is. <laughs> there's, there's businessmen that that wear. That is um, absolutely right. I was in line at Perth Airport, um, and a businessman in front of me, full suit, he took off his his R M Williams cowboy boots right in front of me, and then I took mine off to go <laughs> through the scanner, and he he asked me what brand they were, and he said he'd heard of them, which was pretty cool. <laughs> nice, always nice when that happens. I always get a bit of a a little, uh, ch- no, I was going to say a chill, a little shiver up the spine when someone says they've heard of my podcast. That's that's nice recognition, and I reckon that's going to happen more and more. To you so yeah, hope- you've got the well based on the marketing foundation which you are laying which we're about to talk about um i think <laughs> that it's, it's almost uh it's almost a definite you are you're designing you're doing all the designs yourself you yes. are uh, manufacturing in mexico uh, yes. <laughs> correct using yes. using um cow hide from where yes so the cow hide is from mexico yeah and um, we also use cow lining. Um, a lot of companies um, use pig lining, um, which is cheaper, the cheaper option, but uh, we go with cow lining. I just – because I know where it comes from. Fair enough. I'm just happier with that. <laughs> yeah, um, you are going to – what's the business model, wholesale or retail? Um, both. both. So we're going to sell directly uh, from our mobile shop. We'll be travelling around to festivals and selling ourselves as well as online next year. Um, but we'll also be selling to wholesale to Western stores. Okay. Okay. Uh, and okay, so a mobile shop. Okay, let's get into the marketing because you've got some cool marketing going on. And by <laughs> the way, what are they going to retail for? Uh, so they start at three hundred and forty nine ninety five for adult boots, yeah. and the children start at one hundred and twenty nine ninety five. And go up to what? Uh, that we haven't worked out yet because some of our boots cost a lot more to make. Um, the feather ones I was just telling you about a part of that. Um, the process is actually in Italy uh, before it goes to Mexico. So those ones are actually we're going to have to sell them yeah, right. for a little bit more because they cost a little bit that more. It seems to make. pretty reasonable. So um, you, you've got um, you've got a whole lot of marketing going on. You are laying the foundation for when you really do have plenty of stock and can go out and build a name and a brand. Um, what's the aim of all this marketing that you're about to share with us right now? I guess I just want to get my name out there so people know who we are um, and they know what kind of boots they're going to get. A lot of people have even planned out exactly which one they want to buy before they even walk into our store, which is pretty cool. So they already come in saying, I'm after this exact one on this size. And so they, they already have it worked out and that's pretty awesome. So when you say walk into your store, which what store? Oh, we've had a couple of um, just small market stalls up up here in the Pilbara. Um, one of the reasons we actually did that was because the Pilbara region um, is just the last to get everything. We're, um, you know, about 10 years behind the rest of Australia. Yeah. And we thought it would be kind of cool for once to give them the first opportunity to buy things. So, wow. and especially the first in Australia. So that's what we did. We had a couple of market stalls up here. We did really well and everyone was really happy and we've had a lot of great feedback. 
back. So I love I love the fact that you are laying this foundation and you've got a little bit of stock, uh, enough to kind of sell at the local Pilbara market, um, <laughs> but you are kind of creating this pent-up demand where people are going to start to go nuts over time saying oh, yeah yeah it's it's kind of already happening we get we get a lot of messages daily and i just have to um, explain that they're coming and and people have actually surprised me with their patience in in a world where things are you can get things instantly people have been really good i think they really want to support a small Aussie business that's you know run by family so it's been really great well, and I'll correct, and I also think nothing. The best marketing is a great product, and whilst I haven't smelt or touched or felt, because <laughs> I think smells a big one. Um, it's uh, huge. Everyone smells our boots. I, I have no <laughs> doubt. Really I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a pair now, and I'm just thinking because I reckon s- uh, smell and and that scent thing is so underdone yeah. in marketing uh, by many brands, most brands. Um, I imagine they'll they'd smell amazing. So yeah, they do. You, you're just creating it. So you've got no website. I'm talking to you in May 2017. Um, yeah. You've got no website. You know when <laughs> when when um, Phil. Uh, Photographer Phil said I should interview you. The first thing I do is go to the website. I'm like, it's down. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we so do that's have it. one. It's just being at the moment we, we had a lot of photography um, taken of all of our boots yep. and so at the moment it's being worked on. All of that's been uploaded. Love it. Uh, but but even when that's um, that's running, it's pretty much just going to show people our range yep. and where we're heading in person that they can buy our boots at. And then eventually we will be online, <laughs> so, hopefully so you, sooner rather than later. <laughs> um, I, I want to talk then because you, you your Facebook and Insta are rocking, but uh, let, let's just go straight for the jugular here. Tell us about your Oscars marketing experience. Well, that was uh, obviously just purely a marketing decision, that one, um, because it's not, you know, feasibly it's not the greatest uh, thing to do, but it, it worked out really well for us. If you're going to put an ad in a newspaper, um, you probably would pay what we paid to do this whole event. Um, and we ended up getting so much marketing in Australia out of it, free marketing, just because we were going to the event, which made it worthwhile before we even left Australia. So, um, yeah, they found us on Instagram, the company that runs the gifting suites. Um, and at the Oscars. Got- yeah, at the at the just the day before the Oscars, yes. Right. So, so all the celebrities are in LA anyway, ready to go to the Oscars, and so they um, spend their days going around to different gifting suites. And um, yeah, so we went to one, and um, we were told we were the most popular stall there by just about every celebrity that came up to talk to us. So they, they like loved who? Groups. Oh, um, come on, name drop. Had, um, Leonardo Nam, so he is in uh, Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, and I think he's in yeah. Westworld. I think it's called. I hope I didn't get that wrong. Yeah, it's all right. um, but he he was awesome. He's an Aussie actor that's gone over to the US and done really well for himself. And he was obsessed with our boots. Um, and I mean, we that, there was a lot. <laughs> there was more than I can than I can name. But oh, so give us one more, just one more. <laughs> we, we love a bit of name dropping on this show. Um, I honestly, I can't remember right now. But the, <laughs> Tell me, did did Uma, uh, did Uma Thurman sort of walk by, saunter by, by any chance? No, I didn't oh, see her. I love Uma. So paint the picture of these gifting suites. What's that about? So you pretty much you take a product, or some people are giving away vouchers to their product, and you um, the celebrities get led through these gifting suites, and they talk to all the owners of the companies, where you explain what your product is. And they ask whatever questions they want to ask and then they they take a product if they are interested in it. And if they want to be in touch with you um, for promotional reasons, um, they'll leave their contact details with you as well. So we have a a massive pile of (laughs) contact details of celebrities that want to wear them in movies, in Western movies and talk shows. And so, yeah, we will get in touch with them. Do you know who I reckon you should be sending a pair to immediately would be Tarantino. Oh, really? Oh, Does he yeah. wear Western boots? Yeah. That oh. guy's like, yeah. And, and like his last film, which was um, The Hateful Eight, was just like the ultimate, in my mind anyway, the ultimate Western film. But, um, oh, yeah. Awesome. 
That's so. so um, okay, so you do the Oscars. Um, you get a whole bunch of cards from celebrities who want to, you know, send us a pair. We want to wear them in films. That's good. So, what, yep. what's your plan for that? Out of interest, because you're like, are you just wait now? Do you just wait for the um, boots to well, come out? Or? Yeah, well, we've told them all that we don't have them. When we were over there, we said, you know, they, they take months to make. So it's it's when we get them, and they were fine with that, yep. <laughs> and um, they were just happy to get them because they're going to receive them in America before they're for sale in America, which makes them very exclusive, which we all know celebrities love. Yeah, yeah. So um, that helped, I think. Um, and they all picked the designs that they love the most and so we know which ones to send them and um, and when the time comes we'll, we'll just get hold of them and see if they're still interested. Which hopefully they you you say do. celebrities love exclusive. I would argue that everyone loves exclusive. Everyone, and I think yeah, whether you actually. know whether you know it or not, what you're kind of implementing right now is this kind of scarcity strategy. Which you know, it's like you see something and it's not available, and you want it even more, right? It is kind of happening, and we did we didn't plan it that way. It's just um, it's kind <laughs> of just the way it's gone, but it, it seems to be working. So I wonder then, um, as as um, Cater Boot Co develops, whether do you maintain that concept of scarcity or do you just want to get the range out to every western and country shop in the country no we are going to be selling to very limited stores Uh um we have a lot that are interested but we're pulling back on the amount that we actually sell to Mm -hmm. so there won't be a huge availability with stores they will mostly come through us Mm -hmm. um with with maybe two stores in each state i think is our current plan um and we'll see how that goes yeah nice okay so um, that whole oscar strategy kind of leads into influencer marketing which again i mean i'm using all these fancy terms uh cara (laughs) but uh you're just a chick from the mines and who's just implementing a bl- unbelievably good marketing strategy. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how I'm doing that. It's I just I just like to think outside of the box, I guess. And I'm a big believer in collaborations. Right. Um, so a, a lot of my um, marketing strategy has been to team up with some other businesses. Definitely not competition, but businesses that really work in well with what I'm doing. And so one of them, there's an example, is uh, Neon Cowboys. Um, it's a company in the US and they make this light up cowboy hat for parties and they're getting a really big following. I mean, one of the Kardashians just did a photo shoot with their hat. Mm-hmm. Um, so I um, contacted the owner of that company and she was really interested. And so I sent her a pair of boots and she sent me a hat. And I've done a photo shoot with her hat and my boots in the Pilbara and she has done a photo shoot in the US with. Uh, my boots and her hat. And so we're both going to post that on our social media. So it's a, just a cross-promotional kind of thing. Okay. I, I love that. You know, like if I had a round of applause sound effect right now, I'd be pushing my <laughs> button. So so uh, explain, you explain that as if it happened like so easily, but this... It did th- really. Okay. It, you, just, you just reach out and... and How did you reach out to her? Instagram. So um, I find Instagram really, really great for this sort of thing and, and even Facebook really, but... Um, I think people are quite afraid to just reach out and ask people. You you know, the worst that can happen is someone says no. So I think it's really um, it's worth it just to give it a shot. Can you just explain for the dummies amongst us what, <laughs> what your contact request with this lady who does the neon cowboy hats looked like on Instagram? Uh, so I sent a direct message, they're called, a yep. DM um, through Instagram to the owner of um, of Neon Cowboys and I just explained to her about my business and, um, and that I would love to do a photo shoot and I told her I would buy a hat. I don't ever ask for free products. I just want to buy their product and do an awesome photo shoot and it's up to them if they want to share it. And then um, she said she'd love to do the same. So I sent her a pair of boots and, and that's what we're going to do. And so it worked out pretty well. That's genius. So right now you've traded photo shoots, right? Um, yes. You've got yeah, and, and cross-promotional. And, and cross-promotion. You've got the amplification of her sharing you on her Insta, you sharing her on yep. your Insta. You know, that's nice. What do you hope that comes from that partnership? Anything more? 
Well, we gain each other's followers potentially. So if, you know, she's got followers that I didn't have before or I have ones that she didn't have, they might um, start following each other and then possibly purchasing the product. So that's what uh, I guess the, the aim is. And, and you never know, we might do something again together in the future. But, um, yeah, usually these things are just a, a one-off unless unless it works out really well and it's worthwhile doing something again but i like to keep things different so <laughs> clearly clearly <laughs> and, and we're already halfway through some of these marketing ideas that you've got tell mm-hmm. us more about uh, you've got there's there's some famous um is it an italian singer or flute player or something heading down to perth yeah, Zachero, Z- I think he's, his name is, and, and millions and millions and millions of followers worldwide. He's pretty massive. But his main fiddle player um, is named Andrea Witt. Um, she was a fiddle player for Shania Twain, um, the Deep Purple, lot, lots of other big names, Stevie Wonder. So she um, she's also a fashion blogger, and that's how I got in touch with her originally to talk about my boots. And then she told me she was going to be in Australia and that she'd love to wear my boots on stage. So as soon as she messaged me that, which was only last night, I organised my flight to Perth for next week to meet her. <laughs> so... so- I'm going to understand this a bit deeper. Famous, <laughs> famous musician, also uh, a famous fiddle player of a famous musician. Yes, happens to be a travel blogger. You yes. reach out to oh, her. Fashion. What's that? A fashion blogger. Fashion blogger. Yep. Okay, you reach out to her via via Instagram. She goes, "Love your boots." Yes. Um, be happy to wear them on stage at the concert. Yeah. You go on stage. On stage, we can do that. You're flying down tomorrow. You're going to get the boots. You're going to get some photos. She's going to share it on a social. Happy days. Yes, yes, pretty much. That's how it will work. And <laughs> and it's a lot of the photos because she's right up next to the singer playing the fiddle. So some of these photos could be shared by all kinds of media uh. outlets with her wearing the boots because she's right next to him. So there's not just my photographer that will be there there will be media from lots of different avenues so there's a lot of potential in just wearing one pair of boots on stage cara i am loving your work listeners i'm li- i'm listening i'm talking to cara lauder who is the founder of cater boot co which isn't kind of really launched but it's sort of launched but it isn't if you're at a market <laughs> in the pilbara then you might get a pair but she might not have your size because she's not quite ready to open a door <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, and, and, and the whole reason we are talking is because I think she's laying the foundation for what should be a really successful business in, I don't know, soon. But I'm certainly going to be coming back to you in 12 months' time, Cara. That would be great. Let's keep talking. Um, you've produced a beautiful video, uh, which, again, you know, like I look at this video, uh, it's, it's a shop in a helicopter on a cliff, in the yeah. Pilbara with yep. a beautiful um, Cater Boot Co. printed mini marquee and you're just sort of standing there and it's beautiful and it's a big production. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't that big. I mean, we had a very talented um, photographer, Paul Pitchigan, who's a, um, he's a Bustleton photographer and he has um, a lot of experience in helicopter photo shoots and videos so that was awesome our um helicopter pilot has so much experience so it actually took only um the first take and they got those shots so they just flew around maybe three times around the marquee and then they left and that was it so it it looks like it it took a lot longer than than what it did Mm. and it was an idea i came up with a long time ago i wanted to showcase the amazing Pilbara that we live in and what better way to do that than right up the top of a, a mountain in the Pilbara. It, what, what I find interesting about, okay, you've got a beautiful, like, backdrop, which is the Pilbara. That comes free. Um, the marquee wouldn't have cost a whole lot. It's beautifully designed, but you've got that. You've got access to Phil, who's he's your cousin or something, isn't he? So you've Paul, com- it, Paul, Paul is, um, yeah, he's, he's Nathan's cousin's wife. Yeah, okay. so, so, my so, husband's cousin's wife. But, but what I find interesting about that is it's, husband's. It's oh a gosh. brand. It's a brand. It's just a bit of branding. And many business owners would look at that and go, "Well, I'm not going to make a sale from it, so I'm not going to do that." Yeah, but it, it, that's not how I see it. I see it as um, it's just it's a different way of marketing. What I saw it as is people are going to share that who live in the Pilbara because they want to share what the Pilbara looks like. 
And um, and it also gives my followers, I've got quite a lot of fans overseas, it kind of gives them an idea of exactly where I am, which is the middle of nowhere. And it kind of gives them a little bit of an understanding of of where I'm working from. And I think it was just a nice way to, to show that. Yeah. And we've even got the background music to it is actually a Perth band as well that, that we had. Um, so we tried to make it really Western Australian. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'll put I will put a I'll embed it in the show notes for this episode over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and people can see it. Um, let's talk social media. You've kind of touched on how you've been using um, Instagram to direct message people you want to partner up with. But what about the the um, consumer facing part of Facebook and Instagram? How are you using those channels? Well, I'm I'm slowly kind of drip feeding, I guess, photos out to people of the our boots that we have that they'll be able to buy in the next couple of months, um, and I'm getting a really good idea of what people are liking, and so that's really helping me develop my boots as well. And it, they've just had such a great response, and that's just from photos. And when people see them in person, it's it's an even bigger response. So it's it's been very positive for me to see. Um, how people are uh, taking my designs Mm -hmm. and that I'm heading in the right direction, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's the cheapest research you'll ever do really, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm looking at you've got uh, your current post 21 hours ago, Kirsty Lee Acres. Yes. Bit of a country. I, I, I'm hopeless with country music. I think all country music is like it's all about the farmer losing the cattle and the sheep running away. So I've never really got into it. But um. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, she's amazing. She's worth a listen to. She's she? absolutely brilliant. She's actually our brand ambassador. Because it's a great photo of her with her cater boots up on the bench. Yeah, brand new, and they fit perfectly. And she's she loves them, which is wonderful. She clearly is a, a person, a name in the country music scene she's your brand ambassador how how (laughs) um so it's this is a yeah so on instagram again um a lady a um, a lady i I need to go and get on instagram can we finish up i I think so um so a lady was following me who her brand name is racy and lucky and she's actually a designer to the stars so she does she dressed lady gaga for once um at one instance and she dresses some pretty big names of country music and so she was following me and she was showing Kirsty Lee Akers my boots on Instagram while she was dressing her. And so she got hold of me and, um, and we, were, we were talking about, uh, yeah, me potentially having a, a brand ambassador and she suggested Kirsty Lee Akers. And I had listened to her for years oh, out wow. driving around in the bush. She, I was always loved her music, so I thought that would be fantastic and got in touch with Kirsty's manager and then Kirsty and, yeah, that's all, that's all just happened very recently. Were you a bit of a fangirl when you got in yeah, touch with her? Time. Yeah, big time. You didn't make yeah, a fool she, yourself, did you? No, I I, no I'm not. They're just, they're just normal people <laughs> in the, at the end of the day. But um, I, I do love her music and I don't. I wouldn't be pairing with someone if, if I didn't love what they did. So, um, what, about, what about when the Beebs calls? No. Mm. <laughs> no, he's not. Really? He, no, I don't think so. I don't think he would call because I don't think this is his image. But what if he did? Uh, I guess I would see what happened when he did. But I, I really, it just, no, I don't think so. So I've, you, had, you... I've had other pop stars contact me that were kind of in just that kind of genre. And it, yeah, it's it's not... Like who? Kirsty's definitely. I'm not, I'm not going to name names there, but it is just. It didn't. It doesn't suit my brand. I'm trying to really, yeah, stick with the people that would really resonate with my audience. You are very. You have a set of values. You are very clear on your brand, and good on you. You're not going to budge. No, thank you. you I'm very stubborn. Well, uh, again, I mean, you know, like. It's classic marketing. I mean, I went to uni for three years to understand this. You just go and launch a brand. You're just applying. It's all obvious, isn't it? It's not rocket science. No, it's just thinking outside the box, I think, and just thinking of some different things that people might not have done before. Are you constantly asking yourself, well, what is the question that you're constantly asking yourself, Cara, when it comes to promoting this brand? Um, the, 
it's just crazy the ideas just come to me and it's mostly when I'm I'm rocking my daughter to sleep actually in the pitch black in the room and I'll just think of things and it's um yeah it's quite crazy hmm you let them come in and you capture them and have you got a journal or something that's just I do yeah I have a passion planner it's like a it's a journal that you can write all your all your um to-do lists and all your business ideas in and that that is my bible pretty much we haven't finished with these marketing ideas that you've got for Cater Boots. Only, these are the only ones that I know about. I, yeah, I'm, no, tell me about a... um, the mobile shop. Um, so we're heading um, we're heading to the east coast soon with our mobile shop. Actually, to some big festivals over there, um, and it's. I think it's a really good way to meet our customers in person and that will give us the best idea on how we're going. We could just start online, and I just don't think that would be the best way to, to get to know people and to see them actually try on the boots and, and get that uh, feedback straight away. Cool. That's that's a that's a road trip. Yeah. It's well I'm I'm actually pregnant, so I'm having my baby on the east coast, which is where I'm from. Um so we're kind of planning everything in around <laughs> around that. So we need to be over there anyway. So while we're over there we're gonna head to Why not? head to some festivals. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so like is it is it a caravan or ca- some kind of branded setup? No, it's it's just a marquee. Marquee. So it's just a, a six by a three meter marquee. <laughs> Eventually we're going to get a big semi trailer set up, but at the moment we don't really need that. Is this the marquee in the video? Yeah, this is that. It's marquee. beautiful. Yeah. Again, yeah. I, what what I like about it is you've gone to some effort, right? I mean, I've seen yeah, plenty probably. of marquees just with the logo kind of stuck on, but you've yeah, actually we're make it look professional. I think, and we've done that from the from the get go. Even our boot boxes have got the cracked dirt all over it, which is a photo of the the cracked dirt here in the Pilbara with the really the well known red dirt that we've got up here. Um, so we've kind of tried to make it look as professional as possible from the get-go to the point where people think I'm this massive brand and there's a whole team of us when it's really just me. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh, boy. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I am so excited for you. I love the Thank passion you. that you exude for this <laughs> new boot brand. I hope I hope you absolutely smash it out of the park. Thank you. Uh, where can people go to find you? I don't know whether to direct them to the website or to Facebook or Instagram. We're actually hosting a um, country music cocktail event at Broad Beach Country Music Festival in July. Um, so that's the end of July on the 28th, and we're hoping to have our marquee there um, at from the 28th to the 30th as well, selling boots. Otherwise, uh, in August, we're heading to the Gimpy Muster. Oh, you are everywhere. And if they want to get you online, what do you reckon? Um, website? Uh, the website is caterbootco.com.au, and we will have that up in the next couple of weeks no so people can see our, um, our boot range. And, and they'll also be able to find out where we are. I, I love your work. Thank you so much. And I am going to uh, ask you back in 12 months' time because awesome. uh, I want to see where this amazing foundation that you are laying has led. Thank you. I have no idea where we're going to be, but I think it's going to be awesome. There you go, team. Cara Lauder from the Cater Boot Company. As of now, the website is still in development, but depends when you're listening to this. It may well be up. But uh, you've got to check out Cara's Instagram uh, over at Kada Boot Co. That's K-A-D-E-R-B-O-O-T-C-O. And you can get a sense of what she's all about. But don't you love it? She's doing all that, and a website isn't even live. Now, to prove just how militant Cara is about managing her brand, which I think, by the way, is absolutely brilliant, here's an email I received from her the day after the interview. She says, Tim, thanks again for the interview. I'm just worried about one part of it. It kept me up most of the night. Oh, Cara, I feel guilty. You should be sleeping, not worrying about interviews you do with me. She goes on to say, I know there are a lot of dedicated Bieber fans out there, and I just don't want it to sound like I wouldn't let him wear my boots. Not at all what I was meaning. Is there any chance that a little part of that interview could be cut out? Sorry, I was up all night thinking about it, so I thought I'd ask. Now, as I, that's the end of the email. As I said, I love Cara's strict management of her brand. We, I'd like to see more of it in the world of small business. But I quickly assured her that people aren't that literal. Like, they're not going to not buy her boots 
just because of her views on a certain celeb. So fortunately, she agreed that we should leave the interview as is, but I did want to share that little email exchange with you because it just it just demonstrates the commitment she has to her wonderful brand. Coming up, I share my top three attention grabbers from that fireside chat with Cara. Plus, I've got another low-cost marketing idea which addresses something that's really pissing me off. <laughs> but first... If uh, if you're not one of the many listeners that have taken up Fast Mail's incredible offer, then take a listen to this. This show is lovingly supported by Fast Mail, an insanely secure, ad-free email hosting service for that beautiful business of yours. I asked Fastmail's operations engineer, aka lead geek, Rob Norris, to wrap some numbers around Fastmail. <laughs> and didn't he get excited? All right, well, we have about 150,000 users around the world. We deal with about 30 to 40 million emails every day. I think about 30 million of them is spam that we reject. So there's about four or five million legitimate emails a day that come through the system. We have 500 terabytes of just backup storage. So this is not the day-to-day mail that people use, but just all of their mail, last ditch, you know, the world is on fire. We've got a copy of everything. So that's a ton of that. And we operate at that scale, but we the company is probably only around 20 people. We run small, but we pack a punch. <laughs> Fast mail. Taking the fear out of Armageddon. Packages start from less than $4 a month. Grab a free 30-day trial plus 15% off your first year over at fastmail.com forward slash Timbo. Right, oh, my top three attention grabbers from my chat with Cara Lauder from the Cater Boot Company. Thanks to 52ways.biz and Fastmail. Attention grabber number one, lay the right foundations to ensure you build a tribe. Now, whether you're just launching your business or if you've been in business for a while, be sure to get in place some solid marketing activities that will have your people standing up and taking notice. Cara's doing it from the outset. It doesn't mean you can't do it, you know, even if you've been in business for five years, 10 years. We can learn a lot from that. Attention grabber number two, strategic collaborations. We've talked about this before. In fact, there's a fantastic webinar inside the forum about how to establish profitable partnerships. But Cara's advice about teaming up with others that you work well with, I think, is genius. And I love how she reaches out to them using Instagram. Hey, how good's that? Attention grabber number three, Invest the necessary time and money in that beautiful business of yours. I I loved Cara's willingness to head over to the Oscars or down to Perth at the last minute, by the way, in order to take advantage of these amazing opportunities that come her way. You've got to spend a little time and a little money to make it, right? There are three things that grabbed my attention. I'd love to know what grabbed yours. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 367 and let me know. What have you got to lose? It's time for one simple yet effective marketing idea that you can implement immediately. One that's not going to cost you a fortune that might just generate you more awareness, more inquiry, and ultimately more sales. I call today's idea the friendly website hack. Now, I'm astounded at just how many business websites I come across that are incredibly impersonal, taking no time to introduce the founder or the people that work there. So no matter what type of business you run, but especially if you're a service provider, please, please, please Introduce yourself and your team on your website. After all, people buy from people. And implementing this one simple hack will help you build a brand that emotionally connects with the people you want to sell to. So here's my three steps to making your website uber-friendly. Step one, review your website and identify all the opportunities for you to show prospects that there are real people working in your business. Step two, start creating the content that introduces you and your team. Now, this could include having an About Us page 
where you, introdu- where you introduce each team member. That could include photos and insightful information that helps prospects become familiar with you and your business. You could, on your Contact Us page, include a name or three, real names, and a personal email address, not that info at type email. Don't like those. You could also sprinkle videos or audios around that have you, the business owner, or your employees reviewing your products and services. And you could include a blog, which is contributed to not just by you, but other specialists in your business. And then step three, post that content to your website. And here's the pro tip. Keep this updated. As you employ new people, add them. As people leave, delete them. There you go, team. That's my three steps to creating a much more friendly website. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 367, where you'll find some additional resources to help you bring this idea to life. And if you'd like help implementing any of the low-cost marketing ideas I share in this segment, and there's been well over 30 so far, go ahead and join the Small Business Big Marketing Club over at crankmymarketing.com, where I'll personally support you daily on your marketing journey. So, what have you got to lose? All right, that almost wraps up another episode of the Small Business Big Marketing Show. But there's plenty of marketing gold coming your way in the weeks ahead, including a chat with another business owner who's implementing marketing ideas shared on this show. And as a result, has built a small business turning over a lazy $4 million bucks a year in just seven years. Hey, have you listened to the chat I had with Gelato Messina founder Declan Lee? Here he is talking about honesty, the only core value they have in the business. I certainly don't tell anyone that that's our core value. We just try and impart it on our staff everywhere that we go, um, whether it's in the kitchen, my marketing team, or, you know, in the stores. There's this overriding and overarching core value that the way that we make our product is really honest. If we're saying we're using the best product from somewhere, we use the best nuts or we use the best quality milk or whatever, we do that. If we say that we don't, you know, put any, if we make everything from scratch, we make everything from scratch. And sometimes that's a harder and more expensive way to do it. But it also is across the board of how we treat customers, for example. So I really hate when you go into a retail experience or a food experience and something goes wrong and the, the staff member tries to gloss over the thing and pretend that they know what's in the gelato, for example. We say to our staff, if you don't know what's in it and there's an allergy question, tell them you don't know. I love that interview. Declan goes on to further explain how that one core value permeates, haven't used that word for a while, all parts of the gelato Messina business. You'll find the full interview plus hundreds more over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com or you can subscribe free and you'll never miss another episode on your favourite podcast catcher. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. Email me, tim at timreid, R-E-I-D dot com dot au. Uh, Even hit me up on Twitter if you like, at Timbo Reid. Be sure to grab your free seat at Dale Beaumont's 52 Ways events that will be touring Australia and New Zealand in May, June and August this year. Simply go to 52ways.biz and grab your seat now as they are limited and are filling up very quickly. And check out Fastmail, private, secure, ad-free email hosting that's lightning fast. Grab a free 30-day trial plus get a listener-exclusive 15% off your first year over at fastmail.com forward slash Timbo. Packages start from just four, under four bucks a month, actually. If you love the small business, big marketing show, why wouldn't you? Then let another business owner know about it. In fact, grab their phone and download it into their favourite podcast catcher immediately. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reid. Thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.